So I'm John. I saw all the other Okay. It is Tuesday, April 12, 2022. We'll call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. Okay, minutes and receipt. <coughs> minutes and reports received and filed. Yes, we have the sheriff's March 2022 fees, and we have the treasurer's March 2022 reconciliation report. Okay, Commissioner Committee liaison reports, upcoming meetings and events. Yeah, we have Mac Ford meeting in about an hour. Probably miss out, and but they were doing it on a Tuesday this time for going over and doing some legislative meetings. Um, we got another meeting three o'clock this afternoon for the uh, ARPA money. Uh, Home Builders Board meeting this afternoon. Planning Commission meeting this evening. Solid Waste Management District Board meeting tomorrow afternoon. HBA General Membership meeting Wednesday. Communities meeting Thursday morning. At the Chiefs, is that this week? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, Good Friday, Easter, and quarterly reports are due. Don't forget those. I think that's it. Let's see. Uh, in, in addition to what um, Jeff mentioned, um, salute to America tomorrow and a safety meeting on Thursday. Okay. And I've got down what Jeff had too. Uh, Wednesday at 1.30, the Sons of the American Revolution, we are honoring Thomas Jefferson's 279 years old tomorrow. So we're going to do that out on the Capitol steps and get rained on. And then the Red Slipper has their launch uh, Wednesday night too out at CCP. But that's all I've got. Uh, commission comments. Before we do our bids and contracts, I'm going to move the proclamation for National Public Safety Telecommunicators forward and have you come forward, and then I'll have, I've got our, both of you. Do it all. Come on up. Come on up. Whereas the week of April 11th through the 16th, 2022 is National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, and whereas Jefferson City and Cole County Public Safety Telecommunicators answer over 17,000 calls for service every year, serving as a trusted lifeline between our citizens and emergency responders. And we got some other whereas. Uh, now, therefore, we, the Cole County Commission, by virtue of the authority vested in me, us by the laws of Missouri, do hereby proclaim the week of April 11th through the 16th, 2022, as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week and call upon the people of Cole County to observe this week by appreciating our telecommunicators and recognizing the critical role they play in protecting the citizens of Jefferson City and Cole County. So you get one, you get one. Scrunch together. Guys, your shower this morning. <laughs> guys now you know we we do the toys for tots every year and so this this year our EMS department really stepped forward and I forget how many hundred toys you collect but I'm kind of an ex officio uh, Marie Corps Reserve toys for tots person so anyway the president you are receiving the President's Award for your collection of all of the toys, and next year, this year, we'll do... It was two ambulances last year, we gotta do three this year. Yeah, yeah. 
Getting bigger handles, too. Yes, we're getting bigger handles. So hopefully it'll happen. Anyway, thank you. Yeah, it's a good job, guys. Okay, we will go back to our agenda. Bids and contracts, bid award for 2022-16 interior painting at EMS. All right, for 2022-16 interior painting at EMS, we had three vendors respond to the RFP. Um, Eric did call on some references, and our recommendation is to go with Imhoff Construction with $15,835. Do you guys have a bid tab? No, it's not attached to it. I think you emailed it. I don't remember. <laughs> That's how I think. think. With that. And they're a lot quicker, too. Make a motion to uh, award the uh, interior painting contract to Imhoff Construction at a cost of 15835 Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Do we have any unfinished business? Okay, new business. Uh, accounts payable review. Motion to approve accounts payable pending review. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second and final reading of budget adjustment number one. Okay, this is for $11,998. This is a grant that the EMA department got from Homeland Security. So I do need motion on this today. Good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> So who's it with? Homeland Security? Yeah. Okay. Make a motion to sign the budget amendment with Homeland Security for the budget adjustment number one. One? One. That's number one. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Signing of none company agreement, and I think this is something we do every year. It's Chris Estes. He's not here. Yeah. Do we have the agreement? Did he send it to you to well, review? I've seen it, but he was supposed to bring it here and finalize it. Did he send it to us? Go to the next oh, he, yeah, we're going to move that. I forget. I think he's got a doctor's appointment, so we'll take that back later. Uh, discussion of salary issues in the Cole County Sheriff's Department. Here you get to sign. Oh, no, I forgot. Too. We get to sign these yeah. two. We can save time if you just want to read them. <laughs> Which, which button was yours here? <laughs> so, the bad news is that currently the Cole County Sheriff's Department's in a staffing crisis. We are 22 down, or more importantly, 13 full-time positions and nine part-time positions down right now. We did hire two. Uh, they started yesterday, two jailers. Um, but we're in a, we're in a staffing crisis. I'm not going to waste your time and look at, uh, there are several articles here I have that I've looked up about law enforcement staffing, not only across the Missouri, but to the, the nation, uh, across the whole nation, we, we are short law enforcement officers. The problem we have here is we're competing with the same people because there's so many law enforcement agencies in this area. 
We've lost people to Boone County Courts, Cole County Courts, because they poached one from me. Uh, JCPD took two from me, Columbia PD took two, Missouri State Highway Pro took one, Callaway took two, Holt Summit took one, State Investigations took two, Treasurer poached another one from mine. So uh, I'm losing people left and right. So I gotta address it, I gotta stop the bleed. And the first thing that I have to do that with is the salaries. Currently our starting salary is 38.8, and if you look at around this area, that's that's pretty low when it comes to what we're, what we're dealing with around this area. To get, to really get into it more, if you look at the very first page, you'll see that the International Association of uh, Chiefs of Police, uh, typically they said that your budget typically comprises of 80 to 95% of the department's total budget should go towards personnel. It's easy to budget if you know that and you move on. Right now, uh, EMS is at 75%, Bailiffs is at 76, health department's at 69, juveniles at 85, prosecutors 94, assessors 74, commissions at 98, Cole County Sheriff's Department's at 54.62. So we're, we're, we're way unfunded as far as our personnel goes. So we wanna do better for our staff. So uh, if you look at the second page, you'll see that my proposal is gonna cost uh, a little bit of money but before we can before we can talk how much money it's going to cost we have to know how much money I'm going to have in my budget with the if you look at the budget on R16 the total total revenue decrease from the prior year is going to be 1.8 so I'm losing 1.8 million revenue because the sales tax is going down the good news is the debt service reduces 2.9 million dollars so while my revenue is going to go down my debt services goes down further, so the total revenue after debt services is gonna be about $1.1 million. So in 2023, I would have $1.1 million additional to my current budget. So this year's budget, I was, uh, it was a, uh, a good budget, right? It was, I didn't have any negative, it was a good budget. So next year, when I go into next year, I'm gonna have the same budget plus another 1.1 million. So I have, I have more than enough money to be able to pay for this, uh, for these, uh, increases page three you'll see that uh, the, what the current base pay is and what the proposed base pay is now when you first look at those you think that's a really big jump and it is but you got to remember that most of the individuals aren't at that base pay because they they got the 5.5 percent y'all uh, thankfully gave them last year and so forth uh, the jailer will start out with jailer you guys gave me the idea uh, whenever you were talking about the uh, EMS you went for the EMTs, you were sending them, they were actually sending EMTs to get uh, certified as a paramedic, and the comment was made, and I don't remember, I, actually I think it was either Jeff or Sam, was talking about how the EMTs then become feeders for paramedics, because they were so short on paramedics. So last year, I don't know if you remember, but last year we started sending people to LETI, and now we're sending them to Lincoln, and because of that, the last two people that we brought on the road has been from the jail. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make the jailers as our feeders. Um, so we need to bring them up. And of course, that's where we're missing most of our people is working in the jail. So they go from 35 to 42. And the deputy, uh, we went to 48. I actually had it at 50,000. And when I first did this budget, I included everybody, including the civilians, because I have issues with my civilians too as far as pay. I can't afford to leave them. If you, if you think about our, our organization, it's like an assembly line. And there's things that has to happen in the front before we can do them in the end for us to accomplish the mission. And most of the stuff that happens in the front end is all civilians. And if I lose civilians, then I have to pull commission people in to do those jobs because I have to do that job. So my first intent was to do all of them, but after speaking with, uh, with you guys, because this has been a six month, this has been a six month process. I didn't come up with this in a week. <laughs> but uh, after speaking with you, after speaking with Kristen, um, I took the civilians out of it and I actually lowered it. I started to start the start salaries for the deputies at 50 uh, because that's what uh, the highway patrols at 53, uh, Boone County's at 51, 51. So, I mean, uh, Miller County's going up. So everyone's going up around us. So I lowered it to 48. And then as far as the, the corporal sergeant, lieutenant captain, I have to have some separation in there so we don't have to come back here again in three years because of compression. So I went with a $7,000 difference. So if you look, you'll see there's $7,000 difference in every one of those levels. Now, 
the base pay is, is, a, is a good thing and we'd be able to implement that, but we still have to take care of our people. It's been there for a while. Unfortunately, I don't have enough money to, to, to make it right. So what I came up with, what our staff came up with, uh, zero to two years, if they've been here for zero to two years, they would not get anything. Uh, two to four years, they'd get a $1,200 bump on top of the proposed base pay. And then the four plus years, they'd get a $2,400 bump on top of the base pay. So if I do it that way, then some of my people have been with me for a while will be will have more money than those that just started with me. And I, I mean, I think that's fair. And then below that, you can see the step raise. Actually, uh, again, this was a, a, the step raise was something I stole from EMS and from uh, Jeff and, and you guys with this uh, instead of, but I can't do every year. But I can do a two-year, a four-year, and a six-year, a $1,200 bump on their anniversary on a two, four, and six years. Uh, but that's next year, so and that's going to be part of my budget negotiations for next year. Um, we're, we're at a crisis because of the shortage that I have in personnel. I had one person this past uh, pay period that turned in 57 hours of overtime. Now, th that's a lot of money we're pushing. And by the way, uh, our current jail overtime is at 65%. So uh, we're in the end of the third month. That's what the budget is right now, and I'm at 65% of my overtime. So I got to do something because I'm burning my people out. I'm killing them. Uh, so on the page four, uh, you can see the total cost for the salary adjustment for the year, for a whole year, would be 661,000, well below the 1.1 million that I currently have. The total cost starting May 1, because that's when I want to implement this, is May 1 would be 406,000. Our current salary surplus is 240,000. And then if you annualize that to May 1, I would actually have $320,000, 328,29. So there is, due to the vacancies, I'll have more than enough funds to implement the salary adjustment this year without any additional cost to the Sheriff's Department. Additionally, since, uh, as far as budget year 2023, the yearly cost of the proposed salary increase is 661,000. My total revenue after debt services will increase by $1.1 million. So due to the emergent nature of my current staffing, I'm requesting to implement these proposed salary adjustments as of 1 May 22. That's all I have. If you have questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Did you say what JC's paying theirs right now? We don't, we don't know. They're in negotiations. I have no idea. What are they paying right now? Do you know? I, I don't know that either. Yes. I because mean, they just got the new tax. That yeah, passed, but they, so. they're going through negotiations right now with them. They're supposed to announce that okay. either tomorrow or, or not tomorrow. I don't, I don't know when they're going to announce it. Okay. So we, we got to talk about it last week, and I briefly told you this morning, too, asked some questions and stuff. So I'd, I was curious what some of these other places do pay so we can do some comparing. And then I'd also like to see what it does to the budget from 23, 24, out to five years, 10 years. 20 years because it right now it looks good because you got 1.1 million after the tax rollback so um i just if i, I have it if i have the 1.1 million in 2023 i'm going to have it for the next forever long it's going to keep coming in right. sales tax is up right now seven percent so in actuality i think that the sales tax number that's in that deal is probably wrong i think it's higher than that yeah, you can plug different numbers in there too and make it do funny things. That's, that's true. We did that back when your that's predecessor was here too, and he goes from red to black pretty easy. Yes, sir. So, I I agree with you. I think we need to make some changes. We need to be able to compete, and we need to pay our officers. Um, I do. I want to kind of look at it. It's a big jump, and I don't know if there's a way we can do it incrementally or but just take a look at what these other ones are making. So, um, the problem with incrementally is. Uh, you're, you're, you can't just give pay raises to the deputies. And that's who I need the most pay raise to because I, not only do I have to stop the bleed for the people leaving right now, uh, in which I just had to leave here in this year. So uh, I can't, I, I, I have to stop the bleed, but I have to be able to go to LETI and to Lincoln and say, come work for me. Because right now I show up and you have Highway Patrol and, and uh, Boone County and St. Charles and all these other ones showing up and they're paying well over 48,000 and it's hard for me to compete with that. I've had, I've actually had a person tell me that they would like to come work for me, but you know, they can get $10,000 more going to the PD. Well, I think with the, the quarter cent city, I think you could probably, probably 
have some deputies just jump over to JCPD. And, well, and so I, I... Especially since they're doing a $10,000 sign-up bonus. Yeah. So that I, if, yeah. I will lose people. Yeah. So I, I'm okay with it for, for now. Just next year, if, if depending on how it affects your budget, you know, we don't come asking for a while. No, no. I, yeah. I think I yeah. looked at this. I, uh, Betsy's looked at this. Bo's looked at this. I've come to each one of you. I've had Kristen look yeah. at this. Uh, the, the, I'm definitely going up. I, I mean, there's a – actually, Kristen and I, we're going back and forth. If it's uh, $1.1 million versus $921,000. Uh, so we actually, whenever we started doing this, we actually uh, – we came in at uh, – it was like – I don't even remember what the number was, 847,000. But that was for everybody in the department. And so uh, after talking with her, uh, I went ahead and took the civilians off right now, but I will be, we'll be talking about it in 2023 for sure. If the money's there, I gotta have some money for my civilians too. And you had said we, you would not do a COLA for them next Any, year. Can we that, do that? I, I would be okay if anybody that's getting a, a done raise before. in May. I did yeah. public works two or three years ago. Okay. I would be comfortable. I would be comfortable in saying that anybody that's in, in uniform that gets a raise in, in one May would they would uh, waive the three percent okay. or the COLA. Sorry. Yeah, whatever. Sheriff, <clears throat> quick question on this: uh, <clears throat> the first box here on the compression raise, the two to four is twelve hundred. The four plus is twenty four hundred. Is that twenty four hundred more, or is it a twelve hundred stacked on a twelve hundred? No, it's twelve hundred or twenty four hundred. So it is 24. Anybody with four plus years would get the base pay plus the 2400. Okay, and and prior to that, they did get the 1200 too, <coughs> right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So after four plus, it's it, it's the equivalent of 3600, because. No. no, sir. I would say it, I would. Uh, we were going to look in it. Anybody that has two to four years in is going to get a 1200 dollars raise. Oh, now, bam. Right now. Okay, I got it. All right, all right. Okay, that that's an immediate uh, immediate yes, calculation. That would, be, that would be part of the formula Got for, it. Okay. for these pay raises. And that's built into the numbers that you've pushed here because you know who has who's got two yes, plus that's and who's got into four. the four hundred and two or four hundred and six thousand dollars. Okay. Just a curiosity, where did you find the two? I don't know who I don't want their names, but you did hire two. Where uh, where did you one was from corrections? One was from Lowe's and one was from Lowe's. Yeah, one's from Lowe's and one's from Corrections. Okay. Well, you and I have gone over these numbers a bunch of times. Um, I do think, uh, you know, when you mention where they're leaving, uh, where they're going when they leave you, and it's it's quite a list. Yes, sir. Okay. It'd really be sad if you were losing them to Lowe's. <laughs> yeah. It's a little sad when you lose them inside the family of the county. Uh, well, I was hoping y'all would pass an ordinance on that, that they can't do that no more. Unless they want to come work for me, then it's okay. Okay. Uh, there's some different jumps in there, too, going from after. I have to <clears throat> look at it a little more this weekend, too. You know, the jailers jumping 7,000 and deputies 9,200 and corporal, sergeant, they, they're all going up but, at even bigger numbers. Uh, I, I don't know. just. Well, you got to understand, weird. Jeff. The it, the base pay for the deputy is thirty eight eight, but they're not making that right now. They're making more than that. It's not going to be a jump like that. Uh, they have a, a, they're they're making more money than the base pay right now. But it is a jump. Oh, it is definitely. So. I mean, and you have to. Uh, the corporals, the the sergeants, lieutenants, they got to have a jump too. I can't have deputies making the same amount of money. We just went through that when we hired uh, when we. Uh, promoted the lieutenant, if you remember. We promoted the lieutenant, and he was already at 56 as a sergeant. So we had to do the $2,000 bump that the, the commission had stated they wanted to do. And so, and I was good with that, but our our compression right now, our, our salaries right now aren't, aren't correct. They're not good. That's why we're trying to fix them. I can't have deputies making the same amount of money as my corporals and the corporals uh, making yeah, as much I as mean, I understand that, but it's try to fix that take care of the ones that we do have then and do that in a different way rather than on the how proposed base but I'm not really sure that that's the problem because I'm going to tell you we were beating our heads to death over this we pulled that's what happened to you no okay. there, there was a tree <laughs> I don't know I understand. but 
<laughs> but there's a, a, a <clears throat> we were at the range of this, and there, this was the, and, and the problem is, and I, this is what I told my staff whenever I was working on this, I, I'm working on the pay for the future. I can't do anything about the past, because there's going to be some people that's going to be upset, because I'm going to have people that's been here 15 years, and they're going to be making the same amount of money as someone that's been here for four. Uh, and that's not fair. But I can't, I can't fix the pay for the past. I can only fix it for the future. So that's what my intent is, is try to fix it for the future. And the way you do that is, is there's going to be people that aren't going to get as much pay raises as others. Uh, and people are just going to get, well, they're going to get screwed. And I, but I'm trying to do it equally or per, as, as I can. But we, guys, we've got to have it. Uh, I mean, I'm already reducing services out in the county uh, by getting rid of the Towson Wardsville position. And that's a position that's not even paid by us. That's paid for by Towson and Wardsville, and I can't fill that position. The SROs are going to have to come out and work the road during the summer because we're already, well, we're at uh, 2021, uh, March of 2021, we were at 3,800 calls for service. March of 2022, we're at 5,200. So our call volume is going up, and we're going into, and we're not even in the busy year yet, and I'm, I'm down in patrol division. So I need help, and I have the money. Show me the money. <laughs> well, here's what I'm going to do, uh, Sheriff. I'm going to make a motion to uh, adopt your, your salary schedule grid effective May 1. Yes, sir. Um, and then we can, if there's a second, then we can discuss it. I will second. Discussion? Are you going to do that with the condition of uh, no COLA raises for them if there are COLA raises? Uh, as, as presented. Then, so, as okay. presented. And there, <clears throat> I think your, your sales tax revenue for the current year is, is well understated because it's set at what it was last year. And as you say, it's up 7%, which yes, I think sir. is equivalent of about 350,000 I think somewhere in that neighborhood so I, I think 80 uh, 22 is going to be okay it, it is going to take some fancy calculating for for your 23 budget this that'll be an interesting mm -hmm. uh, well I, I, I agree with what you're saying but I think the way we're gonna have to look at it is is every year when we go into our budget we look at our personnel first and then everything comes second right yeah and that's what i'm saying absolutely. is you look at your budget and then there might be some things you're going to have i mean to that's how you, that's i mean truthfully that's how you guys look yeah you look at the personnel first and then you look at everything yeah and but i will say this you're you're using that you you say 54 percent of your budget is personnel versus other i think you've got a lot more operating costs because you're feeding a hundred and 50 people a day and none of the other departments are and you're clothing them and so on and so forth. So I, it's not a good, I mean, you can make that comparison, but I would expect your salary percentage to be a lot lower than some of the other areas because of that. Okay. Well, I don't know. It's just the big jump and I'd like to look at it some more. I'm going to probably just say no for that, that reason today, Sheriff. So make sure I don't speed on the way home. Okay. <laughs> Walking back to your office. <laughs> we'll get that moped that's got the governor on it. So that, that's the only reason, though, John. We had, we had a good conversation last week about it, and I think we agreed on a lot of it that we do need to fix some stuff on it, and we need to be able to hire people. We're not even able to keep our jailers right now taking care of people, and we're talking about building out the interstitial layer. So if we can't fill the jailers in one area how are we going to staff that uh, that's I mean, absolutely that's, correct sir that's yeah, another reason why problem down the road but that's another reason why if we're even thinking about building out that <coughs> facility down there i got to start building up my base now so if hopefully this pay raise to the 42 for the jailers will increase people coming to me i'm, I'm even looking at expanding because uh, usually I tell people if you want to work the road in Jeff City, you have to live in, in or in Cole County. You got to live in Cole County, and I'm thinking about waving that and do a 20 mile or something because I, I got nobody. I have nobody applying. So the difference between the jailer and the deputy is the deputy is certified. That's correct. So 
a jailer cannot be a deputy, but a deputy can be a jailer, right? Uh, no. So a jailer can't be a deputy, but a de deputy can fill a jailer spot, but he right. can't. He can't be a. So if well, you I have guess a, he could be. Yeah, we could. Yeah, for a so, so if all the deputy positions are full and somebody wants to come get their foot in the door and work as a jailer. Yeah, that's true. So that's a good point. I, didn't think I, mean, I just I don't understand why anybody would want to work as a jailer, period, because you're stuck inside and with some of the best and, people well, around. And I'm going to tell so, you, that just goes to show you uh, the, the, the amount of professionals and the motivation that some of my uh, staff have down there with the, with the, with the sergeants and the lieutenants the corporals down there and how they're able to motivate and keep these guys coming back. They're doing their job every day under, let's say, adverse conditions. Uh, because of staffing, there's been a couple times, uh, not a couple, there's been a few times that we were down to a minimum of five. We had 157 people in custody at my facility and I had five people working. That's one person for the master control, one person for satellite that leaves three people to handle the whole pot. So that's, we need to look at it, addressing, I'm hoping once we get the full staff, we can address the, 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 uh, the minimum staffing and, and take that up because uh, three Give Betsy a gun and don't give Greg Gaffke a gun, no. 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 I don't think no Greg should get a gun. No. I'm not saying anybody impersonal, I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Sheriff, uh, years ago, prior to you being here, uh, the county ran into the feds with respect to the, the jail conditions and so on. Is the, the size of the jailer staff ever one of those issues with the feds? It was, it's part of the formula for us to be able to get, uh, to be able to get the, and keep the, the uh, U.S. Marshals. And I think that's why they went with five, was because five was the minimum that they would accept. So uh, should we have ever opened our jail with five minimum staffing? I would have said no, but that was uh, that was between uh, Mark, I think it was Mark and Greg that made that decision. So we'll yeah. blame Greg since he's not here right now. And Brian. Yeah, Brian's not here. Okay, any other discussion? Call for the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Sorry, Sheriff. Sure. Thank you. Okay. To two of you. Porsche 911s, <laughs> pursuit vehicles. Okay, Porsche. approval approval of hotspot with first net not... for the county health. Hello. So Good for morning. some time we've had a hotspot that we pay for out of the public health emergency preparedness contract, and it's it's outdated. We pay um, seventy eight dollars and twenty four cents a month for the hotspot. Well, because of Brian, our wonderful IT director. Um, we found out that the first net <laughs> there program he is. is available for us so we can upgrade the hotspot to the new 5G. We'll pay for that of our ELC, ED contract, and then the new fee moving forward that will still be paid for by the emergency preparedness grant is $38 a month. So moving forward, we'll save $40 a month by getting a new hotspot and changing our contract um, to run through that first net program. So I just need approval to proceed with that. Yeah, and I'm like, well, why wouldn't we? Right. I don't have anything to sign. It's all electronic through um, FirstNet and AT&T. Okay. I just need your approval. So you're asking for approval to save money? Yes. Yeah. I, you got it. All right. <laughs> Something seems fishy. I know. Well, we have to pay. We have to buy a new hotspot, but it's covered yeah. under the a DHSS oh, contract. Now that you've I said the ELC ED contract will pay for that. So. Yeah, okay. so I got our Brian's budget. So no, 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 no. I have. I need to spend. Why are you hiding I back there? Yeah, I need so to spend. check it out. That just seems really low. So that's the same way. contract that um, we're using the iPads for environmental. So okay, I mean, okay. I just, it, with FirstNet, it seemed like somehow there was added fees on that stuff with FirstNet and AT and T. Brian's saying no. No, the, the paper is saying the paper we have. I have. Yeah, I have the the contract. It's thirty eight dollars a month. Yeah, I, I'm like. Uh, okay. Yep. Thank you. I'm good with it. Absolutely. We're fine. I'm okay. A little leery of it. That sounds too good to be true. Oh well. You still believe in Santa Claus, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Approval of sole source ad for Stryker Pro Care Services. 
Um, we're just needing approval today to run the ad for sole source for preventive maintenance on 11 CPR devices for EMS. Um, the amount of the sole source is $12,861.45. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to approve the sole source ad for structure and sole care services. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approval and signing of amendment with Aramark Uniform Services. This is, an, this is an amendment to the contract with Aramark Uniform Services. Um, we awarded this at the end of last year for public works for their uniforms. At the time of the awarding, um, we didn't think insurance was necessary for the garments. Um, they kind of just pay for ruins and damages. Um, but with further review, Eric and Carrie um, think that the insurance would actually benefit public works. Um, instead of being charged for the ruins, we're just paying in the future, we'd pay a flat rate. And I think Eric has all this. Additionally, whenever we change over contracts, they come and grade every piece of every garment that we have, and we get docked a certain amount based on the condition of it. And so the insurance just covers us any damage or any replacement that they have to do throughout the year, it's covered. And there's it, it allows us to budget a little bit better, and there's, there's no issues at the end of the year with having to buy back stuff or pay for all the, the stuff that comes in that's damaged. And what is the cost of insurance? Uh, it's three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars and twenty four cents a year, but that would be prorated. It would just start first of April, so it would be three quarters of that amount. So how many do you have to replace a year? Have you kind of kept track of that to see what the difference is? I mean, if it's how much is a pair of pants if it gets a hole in it, or a shirt gets a sleeve ripped off, or uh, pants are $18, I know that for sure. The others, I don't know what the cost is. But we, especially with our mechanics, with oil and, and everything, and, um, okay. uh, short sleeve shirt. So if they get a stain, they replace it and give you a new yeah. clean any, one. Any, any worn out clothing, any ripped, anything that has to be replaced, it, it's covered under this insurance. If so is it? insurance less than what we're paying now for damaged and our, our thought is uh, it could be a little less it could be a little more but in at the end of the day we don't have to worry about budgeting less or more each year it is covered um, we think probably at the end of the day it probably to our advantage it would be better to have the insurance and you know, in addition um, in work talking with Aramark um, there was nobody else that bid on this contract except them, and they only did it because they were, had the business already and didn't want to lose it. But they said going into the future, no companies will do any of this without insurance anymore. So it will be required that we do it. We'll have to put it in our RFP for next time. So I'd recommend go ahead, going ahead and, and starting this up, and that way we have it recovered. Um, and at the end of the term of the contract, they don't have to come and grade everything, and then we get charged for that. And the uh, annual cost again, the thirty three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars and twenty four cents, three seven five zero point two four okay. per year. So who decides if it gets replaced? Um, I mean, if your mechanic comes in and says, "I want a clean shirt without a stain," they keep sending this one back. I want a different one. Do they get a different one, or do we can, they decide that? We can decide that. So you may have had other ones that you could have returned that you went ahead. And um, in some cases, the employee would just keep on using it rather than turn it in just because we know we'd get docked for it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, he would just keep on using it. Uh, this allows us to kind of have better control over making sure we got good, clean looking uniforms. Yeah. I'm fine with it. Yeah. I got a lot of employees out there with the uniforms on, so. Yeah, motion to, or I'll make a motion to sign the. Uh, Amendment with their mark uniform services. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to skip around a little bit just to get the sign of contract with Meyer Electric Generator for the health department done because I think that's last thing for you. Is that what you're here for, Greg? Okay. Um, we're just needing signature for the contract with Meyer Electric. Um, the generator is ordered. Um, so the total was $21,327, and they have to have it, the project completed 45 days once we receive the generator, because right now it's kind of in the air of how long it'll... Yeah, they said 42 weeks to get the generator. How many? 42. Wow. How many kilowatts was that? You remember? 130? 
the more net. Uh, I think it's 40 or 60. How much was it? 21. No, that's just for the. Yeah, that's, Mark, just Mark. that's just Meyer. How much was that? Actual generator? And then it's 40. Switch to. No, total was 42. The generator was about 21, and insulation was about 21. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, automatic transfer switch and the generator was. Yeah, so this is that's just the cool. installation with Meyer. This is not the purchase of the generator. Just yeah, I don't remember how much it was. I think it was about, they were both about 21. Yeah. I think total was 42. 43 something. Yeah. But it was less than 130 kW. <laughs> I'll get with you on it. I'll tell you yeah. the reason later. You might know where there's one. Of the and then, I already um, bought it. We also talked again yesterday about that um, AC unit for the vaccine Got it. room. Was getting a quote on okay. We talked yeah. about the generator. Okay. okay. And did, do we have anything coming up with that fence for that back up on top? We've looked at it. I, Jeff, I'd like to pick your brain afterwards to see. Oh, that won't take long. Uh, see if my idea okay. will work better. I think it's more secure. Uh, and I think it'll be more pleasing. Uh, it was out there yesterday looking at the siding. We may have to replace some of the siding too out there. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. I know we were looking at it last week. I never heard anything about it, but you had some issues with family stuff. So I figured I'd just ask you real quick today where we were at on that. Yeah. I think that's it. Was twenty two thousand? Sorry to interrupt. Twenty two thousand three hundred twenty two dollars, and it was a uh, forty. Forty or sixty. Should say on there. Forty. Okay. So one thirty is way more than we needed out there. You need a one thirty. I'll talk to, like I said, I'll talk to you about that later. Okay. We, we backed it off, uh, <clears throat> got a little frugal on it. Because, I mean, the, maybe the big one would take care of the whole building, but we could live without AC and parts of it if the power went out, but we couldn't right. live without AC or whatever in the vaccine room and the computer yeah. room. Yeah, it's just for the vaccine and server room. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't just for the health department. This if we have something else in general, might be something worth looking into for the price tag. Uh, let's see. You need a motion to sign. Did we do it? All right. I'm, I'll uh, offer a motion to sign the contract with Meyer Electric for twenty-one thousand three twenty-seven for the installation of the generator at the health department. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now we will do discussion of tax credit sponsorship for Jefferson City Soccer Complex project. Thank you all. Um, my name is Kyle Berenson. I'm a volunteer member of the board for United Capital City Soccer Club, a local soccer club here in Jeff City. Um, looking Thanks, to build Jeff. a four to six com fields complex. Um, the old Rock Quarry Highway 54. Um, I've been working on this um, for roughly two and a half years now. Um, it's really come along good in the last year. Um, we have a little over $3 million uh, in our pocket now um, of a six to $8 million total revenue. Um, we feel this will turn the town into a valuable sports destination, very easy access, numerous hotels, Pro the project will be an economic engine for our city. Um, as you read through the packets that we are leaving you, this project has great momentum from local, regional, and even state support, ranging from the Jefferson City Visitor and Convention Bureau, the Regional Planning Commission, and the city who we're also working with. Um, in addition, we have multiple letters of intent to bring out-of-town tournaments here, uh, validating if we build it, they will come. Um, Right now, our teens travel six to eight weeks every spring and fall to Kansas or spring or St. Louis, um, spending a lot of money every weekend. We'd like to keep all the money here and allowing kids um, that have families that can't afford to travel every weekend a place to play competitive soccer. Um, as I was saying, um, the total budget for four fields is approximately 8.5, six fields 10.5 million. Um, we're hoping with uh, going in conjunction with you guys on applications with the Missouri Department of Finance Board um, that we can uh, apply for tax credits 
uh, which will help us raise additional funds. Um, this, this complex would literally provide hundreds of jobs, ranging from referees to administrative and prog program professionals, as well as 100% of the construction of this project is all going to be done with vendors from Jefferson City area. Um, this complex, complex has very good statewide and further um, support. Uh, it's going to encompass as many nine surrounding states coming to Jefferson City. Um, and like most importantly, this complex will provide direct economic boost for our hometown that has been a long time coming and even more evident in the wake of the pandemic. Um, Joe Lopez, who has been working with me um, on this project, he might be able to explain. And um, Luke Holtschneider, who's helping us assist him with this, um, explain the tax credit application a little more than I can do. I was the one that started this project, and now I got a pretty good team helping me to get it done. Um, through, uh, I mean, based on calculations derived from the Destinations International Event Calculator that the Convention and Visits Bureau here did, I mean, it's going to impact our economy crucially in sports. We're looking at $11,600,000 in revenue um, in the first year of this complex. And last year, our total sports revenue was 6.5, so it's almost doubling it, um, taxable revenue, taxable income um, in our town. Um, the uh, return on investment is great. We have plenty of documentation supporting everything that we're doing. We've uh, put a lot of time in this, um, and so we ask for your support in it. Um, and Joe might be able to explain a little more about the tax credit application. Yeah, and I'd like to defer to Luke also, but basically our request today is that you guys sponsor the tax credits. Obviously, we are not a municipality. We're a 501c3. Um, and so we need your support in that. We want to make sure that you guys are well aware there's no liability in this, but you're representing us as a sponsor, and that's what we ask for. We did actually prepare a draft document, which I provided today um, for everyone, but it is in draft. We're waiting on some recommendations back. We've also provided it to your attorney. For review to make sure that there's no you know issues at hand so really at the end of the day what this allows us to do if you would grant us this opportunity is when we push towards the campaign which we're about to begin um, it allows somebody to look back at their contributions and a lot of times based on their position in business and their position financially they might up their contribution based on the tax incentive so we would love to have this opportunity we have yet to go to uh, the board and make this formal request because we can't do it unless we have your support. So that's what we're asking for today. And then Luke, if you want to expand on Yep. And so I'll, I can help talk through some of the tax credit component of this. But um, as I've mentioned numerous times with each of you individually and then both, you know, at uh, previous commission meetings is you know, looking at how we can improve the, you know, kind of economic outlook for central Missouri. It, it's not just industrial. By no means, I think um, the direction which we can grow is, <clears throat> you know, through a lot of community development efforts, uh, which will lead to, uh, you know, long-term industrial and uh, new job opportunities. But um, looking at ways that we can grow revenue and grow, um, really the uh, the the appearance and the attraction of central Missouri is you know through efforts just like this and so have had the opportunity to engage with the team over the past few weeks and actually past you know a couple months and uh, you know there's there's a lot of traction behind it there's a lot of uh, interest there's a lot of support and there's already some kind of early stage indication of donation that's um, going to be coming along so um, what we're here to, um, as Joe kind of mentioned, is is seeking support, not today, but um, you know potentially at the next commission meeting to formalize that support for the county to sponsor a uh, contribution tax credit application uh, to the Missouri Development Finance Board. Um, you know there would be the uh, we would seek a formal resolution by the county at an upcoming. Uh, commission meeting uh, expressing that intent desire to support um, and then finalize the tax credit application but um, you know the long and short of it is that uh, approved projects through the Missouri Development Finance Board uh, would be eligible to support campaign contributions so donations that come into the project 
uh, would be supported at a reimbursement of 50% uh, of their donation would be returned to the donor contributor in the form of a, a tax credit. So uh, as Joe mentioned, it's a way to drive new donations and potentially increase those donations uh, that may be in discussions currently. So uh, in order for uh, the project to be eligible, it has to be uh, officially applied for from a local political uh, form of government or state agency. And um, I think the county has had a lot of, and has expressed a lot of interest in the project and what's going on and um, really feel has been a good partner. And so that's why we would uh, seek the county support in this. Just to be clear, Luke, uh, the campaign is mm -hmm. to uh, raise contributions for this uh, effort. It's not what other folks often think about when you talk about a campaign. No, it, it is for the project. So yes. uh, within the application would be defining what the project is, which is the construction and development mm -hmm. right. of a uh, multi-field soccer complex. Do you know, is the city going to endorse this thing? Or uh, the, you're looking for the county to be the applicant. Mm -hmm. uh, you look for, do you, will you look for other political subdivisions uh, within this area to support or it, endorse? Yes, we, so part of, and speaking with the finance board, is we would want that um, kind of formalized support or conveyed support from the city. Um, so it's it's clearly indicating that there's no objection from the city in pursuit of the project but they're just not the sponsor applicant we can just took quicker and there is no cost to the county so correct uh, okay. yeah I've, I've participated in things like this in the past so uh, i don't have any problem with it and right now the uh, kind of thought is to begin um so we would uh, submit the draft application uh, once all parties agree to the you know the contents of what's provided in the application to the Missouri Development Finance Board it would be uh, more of an informal submission so they they receive uh, draft applications uh, they allot a, a period of time for any feedback um, so some constructive criticism on applications uh, before it would ever be uh, presented or put on an agenda for a uh, Missouri Development Finance Board meeting. So uh, over the next you know week or two, we would look to finalize the draft application locally and then get it in the hands of the Finance Board to review informally. Will this fall in their current fiscal year? Does it get, it does? Before Correct. Before June 30? So the, the right. tax credits are on an actual calendar Oh, that's year. right, we talked about that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, MDFP throws a, uh, the reserve is a million of the 10 for small communities to start with. Is that right? And we'd fit under that. Correct. Under 50,000. There, there's a 10. So the, the program, the contribution tax credit program within the finance board is um, they are uh, authorized 10 million in tax credits per year is what they can authorize. Um, and of that 10 million, um, 1 million is um, set aside at the beginning uh, in reserve for rural communities. Um, by definition, their definition, uh, that's 50,000 or less city population. And so um, county-wise, I, I can't remember what the county limitation is, but based on the project location, uh, this project would meet the rural parameters. Um, okay. But I don't think we also have to limit ourselves to that million. Right. Um, so I the initial thought was to apply for $2 million in tax credits, which ultimately leverages a total of $4 million, $2 million also being reimbursed in the form of tax credits. Okay. But it is a statewide program, $10 million per year. So, uh, you know, personally, I, 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 $2 million is, I think, a kind of high watermark that we would um, uh, seek some favorable response from. but. Um, there is the potential that they would um, reduce or ask for a reduction in request at some point. But they're never going to tell us to go up, so we're going to I'm good there. with that. It's going to be a nonprofit entity as well. Yeah, this. so. And you worked with the YMCA and everybody else that it might affect to make sure you're not stepping on any toes. And they're actually on board with everybody 
So I mean, I think it's, we've had several meetings with this. Yeah. I think it would be a huge benefit to the community. So. And we've had we've had meetings with the city too. I mean, they, right. we've had no objection from anybody throughout the whole state. Everybody's supporting it. So just get ready if you get this done, because you're having about six other sports or sports athletics college. that's going to come to you and say, "Hey, we need something for volleyball, archery, and archery." archery we keep basketball. hearing that from. Yeah. So yeah. find a place to build a huge Butler building. There's there. <laughs> yeah. There is exact <laughs> another conversation like that going on right now yeah. too. Good. So. Glad yeah. to hear because it's it's needed. Yeah, there's yep. a, it's going to be awesome down there. It's going to really drive a lot of money in town. Yep. So if, if we, we can work any. with the uh, council as well to um, the, the county's council on um, hmm. a resolution and some of that language. Yeah, I'm good with the do we need action today. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, we need to uh, add it. did a a date to be determined we will officially um, agree to be the applicant you know I'm not going to speak on behalf of my thought would be to target you know the resolution framework and have that being able to be okay. voted on next week if possible okay, okay. I'd go ahead and add it to the agenda and if for some yeah. reason it's not ready we can pull it off there then. yeah mm -hmm. I think yeah good idea Excellent. Jeff Thank you, gentlemen. Well, thank you all. Yes, thank okay. you. Thank you all very much. Okay. We will go back. I had forgotten. Chris said he had an appointment, but signing of non company agreement. Take care. And this is something we do every year, so. Jill review it. I mean, if it's the same one, then I don't know. If it is, and he's got a number of seeds in it, and out of the way, and so particular commercial property. Yeah. These are actually the um, properties that we had for 2021 at the Board of Equalization. So we're still dealing with the 2021 appeals. So that's what these appraisals are for. And it generally takes about this long to do it, sometimes a little less, but. He's been pretty busy this year. So, um, and I'd probably, depending on whether we get a lot of appeals at BOE this year, we may need to add an addendum to the contract for him to handle any of those commercial properties from the 2022 Board of Equalization. But this is for the 2021 properties that we needed appraisals from. Good. Any I'm questions? Good. Yeah. Make a motion to sign the non company agreement. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Quick and to the point. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate Aye. you uh, making an exception for me this morning. Gotcha. Dr. Clayton. Yeah. Okay. Rock Island Trail Assessment <laughs> Meeting with the Missouri State Parks. Who is yeah. morning? Bring it to you. I can do whatever you like. Yeah. Hi, I'm Melanie Smith. I'm the a deputy regional director for Missouri State Parks, and then I have been serving as the Katie Trail coordinator. Although we have a new Katie Trail coordinator that's with us today, um, and I'm the point person kind of for the Rock Island Corridor project at this point so we just wanted to share a little bit of information we'll go ahead and introduce the rest of our staff that are here with us today I'm David Kelly I'm State Park Director Kathy Brent, uh, Katie Trail Coordinator Zane Price Real Estate Manager Ryan Dunley Planning Section Chief Great thanks for having us today okay. just click it oh roll all right today we're gonna cover a few topics kind of trail development what we're looking at for trail development for the Rock Island Corridor, grants and funding update, and then talk a little bit about community development because we do have a few communities that are in Cole County that are not incorporated cities, so um, certainly we'll be looking for assistance there. This is the Rock Island Corridor map that includes both the Katy Trail and the Rock Island. That red line on the top is Katy Trail State Park. 
Um, over here on the left hand side, the blue section is the Rock Island Spur, which is a 47 and a half mile section of Rock Island Trail that we opened in 2016. The orange up on the top is um, actually part of the same rail corridor, but it's managed by Jackson County Rock Island Trail Authority. And they have, I think, about 13 miles that actually connects up to Arrowhead Stadium. And then the green line on the bottom is that new 144 mile corridor that DNR accepted um, in, on December 14th of 2021. So it kind of illustrates that big loop, how it will connect on both sides. So one of the big differences between Katy Trail and Rock Island Trail um, is that on the Katy Trail, the right of way is 100 foot wide pretty much at any given spot, 50 feet from the center of the main line in both directions. Each of our trail communities typically has a wider right of way, at least twice that big. That is where there was a train station at one point, and we use those for our trailheads. The Rock Island corridor is not the same. So when it was transferred, before it was transferred to us, many parcels were sold off. You can see this is the map of Eugene. The blue hashed areas, um, and actually, I'm gonna pass um, the blue hashed area is what was transferred to DNR, and the red hashed areas are owned by someone else. So we don't have any control over that property. So you can see that in many cases, we have a much narrower right away to work with. Here in Eugene, um, there where that little thin blue strip is, that's leading up to the tunnel. And I don't have my notes, but I'm gonna guess it's about 16 feet wide. That's traditionally what was accepted. So it's wide enough to build a trail, but not wide enough to do too much else um, on that section. And then I also have provided Henley, because I understand that Henley is also unincorporated. <clears throat> so it's kind of the same deal. Red parcels were sold off. These could have been, a lot of them were sold to a private corporation, but some of them were sold to cities, to people who live next to it. Um, a variety of circumstances. <clears throat> So that's really one of the reasons that we're coming out and doing this, this community planning process. Um, let me back up. So we're planning to meet with and have been meeting with every one of the communities that's on, along the Rock Island corridor. And we're sharing this exact information with each one of them so they have a full picture of what it is that the corridor looks like. Because in many cases, we're gonna need assistance from the local community, the local counties, the lo local folks to figure out where makes the most sense to have trailheads and, and other access areas, parking areas and things to the Rock Island corridor. Because we do have such an interesting, um, you know, right away in the communities. And I do have a map that includes all of the communities. So if there's another one on the, the corridor that is of interest to you, we can certainly look at that as well. When we go out to the communities and um, visit with them, information that we share, and I do have this as handouts if you're interested, we share information about what the trail looks like. We have several communities that are excited to get going and are interested in building the, the trail within their community as soon as they're able. Um, they're looking at grants and things. So we provide specifications that show what the trail would need to look like, what the base looks like, what the surfacing looks like, the shoulders and the, the ditches. We also provide information about what's at a trailhead. You know, everywhere that we have a trailhead on the, the Katy Trail, and we think this would be the similar on the Rock Island line, um, got to have parking, somewhere to park your car, got to have water, that's pretty critical for folks who are cycling long distances. Um, bathrooms are nice, people prefer flushing toilets, but vaults also do in a pinch, but bathrooms are important. And then we typically also have an informational, an info depot is what we call these structures. This is the one, I believe, from Pleasant Hill. They provide a little bit of shade if there's no trees around there, a bench so people can sit down and eat their lunch, take a load off um, and rest. And then also some map panels. Typically we have one map panel that has that, probably have that whole loop map that I shared earlier. And there's also a smaller, more detailed map that would show if I get on the trail right here and I go to the left, where will I end up? If I go to the right, where will I end up? Um, and then there's typically a community map. So uh, at North Jeff, it has, if I get off here, how do I get into Jefferson City and how do I connect with the things that I might be looking for as a trail visitor? And then the fourth panel, in this case, is usually used to talk about the local community, maybe the history of the community. If there's some special um, landmark or story that's affiliated with the area, we can share that sort of information, and people are usually really interested to learn more about the communities that they're visiting. Um, as we look for development, obviously one of the big things is um, bridges. So we have lots of bridges that are on. The Rock Island corridor. These are much more substantial bridges in a lot of cases than we see on the Katy. In many ways, um, longer they are. They do also seem to be more sturdily built. I 
if that's a word, um, because it was a freight line. So you know the base structure and the substructure seems to be more sturdy. I will tell you that I'm a parks professional, not an engineer. So every bridge will have to have a, a professional assessment for that. Um, picture on the left is outside of Pleasant Hill. That's what it looked like before we renovated the Rock Island Spur and opened it. And then the picture on the right is kind of the end goal. So concrete decking on those um, existing rail bridges and oxidized steel safety railings on either side to keep people um, on the trail corridor. I did include here a picture of the big bridge that's in Cole County, so the Osage River Bridge. We have been out and taken a few looks uh, at that. That looks, to me, looks pretty similar to that bridge that was on the left in that last slide. So obviously once it has an assessment, it'll need concrete decking, it'll need safety railing. We'll leave that um, middle span that has the through truss in there, but we and we certainly don't want to impede the view there. It's a really pretty view, but we'll have to have safety railings as it leads up to that. The Rock Island also had passenger trains up until the 60s. Yes, but it was so, primarily designed for freight. That's why yeah, I think the yeah. bridges are a little bit, yeah. seem bulkier and sturdier. Yeah. Um, and then I just included this picture just for informational purposes. That's Since this is in Eugene, no. this is the Eugene Tunnel. Okay. I don't know anything about that. You don't know anything about that tunnel. That's why I shared <laughs> the pictures today so we can look. 1,665 feet long. Um, the good news is it is all concrete lined, so that's a bonus. Seems to be in pretty good shape, obviously. Um, things that we'll have to think about. Uh, lighting, so the KD Trail Tunnel, if you've been to Roachport, is about 243 feet long, so this is substantially longer than that. Um, can't You can kind of see the dot in the middle. When David and I took our first trip there, we poor, poorly planned. I only had my cell phone flash wide, and let me tell you, you need, need more lights than that to visit the tunnel. Um, so probably looking at concrete through the center of the tunnels, lighting in the middle. Um, Jackson County has a tunnel that they've added lighting, and they use a motion sensor light at the either end to start those lights. So I just included those for fun. Um, road crossings, typically anywhere that we have a road crossing, um, We'll have some sort of a barrier that encourages our visitors to slow down and pay attention to traffic. The picture there on the right is what we did on the Rock Island Spur. Those are metal, we call them squeeze gates because they're designed to force the person that's approaching them to slow down and make sure they're lined up to get through the center of the gates. The opening is four feet wide. I know it looks kind of narrow in the picture, but it is wide enough for a bicycle to get through for sure. Um, and we typically put those at road crossings. Sometimes you'll see driveway crossings. Um, You'll see utility line crossings, sewer lines, water lines, uh, anytime anything, fiber optics, anytime anything has to cross the right of way, it'll have a license for that use. And Zane is our real estate manager, so he kind of coordinates all the licensing for those uses. Um, there were hundreds and hundreds of, agree of licenses already in place um, that Amron was managing, and they transferred all those to us with the right of way. So we have boxes of those that we're still kind of sorting out. And we've already had a few new applications for driveways that need to cross the the right away. Fencing, we're sharing fencing information with each of the communities. Um, for new fencing, we have a policy that's already been in place for a number of years on the KD where if you need new fencing, we budget money every year for fencing and then it's on a first come first serve basis. We meet with the landowner on site and talk about what the need might be for fencing. And then we, we purchase materials using the state's purchasing requirements and the, the landowner installs it at a mutually agreed upon location. Um, I always say that because <coughs> It's not always on that 100-foot mark. You know, if it's a rock-cut area, you can't exactly get it at the 100-foot mark on either side because it could be halfway up the, the rock cut, and that doesn't make good sense. So we have some flexibility in that. One unique thing, you know, on the Rock Island is there is a state statute that requires we'll be maintaining the fencing. Um, we're still figuring out how that's going to work. We don't have any staff or funding today, so um, those are the things that we still have to figure out. We're certainly taking names and addresses, contact information for folks who have property that are interested in fencing so we can reach back out to them when we know more. Um, and this is an illustration. We shared this at all of our public meetings. We t traditionally do four or five strand barbed wire depending on what the, the landowner's request is because it's, it's designed for agricultural use. Um, allowed uses for Katy Trail and for Rock Island Corridor walking, bicycling, Katy Trail um, allows equestrian in some selected areas and the Rock Island Spur already allows equestrian use. So that's one thing we're meeting with communities is to see what the interest might be for equestrians as we kind of make those plans where does it make sense to allow equestrian use or not. 
um, on the, the Katy Trail from Clinton to the Missouri State Fairgrounds and then Tebbets to Portland, kind of in the central Missouri area, allow equestrian use. Things we have to consider there, and you know, larger footprint for a trailhead, because horse trailers take a lot more room than, than vehicle, you know, cars with bicycle racks, as well as um, larger areas, you know, more visitation sometimes is an issue for equestrian use because everybody yields to the horse and so more people makes it harder to yield, yield to those guys. We anticipate we'll operate the Rock Island Corridor much like we do the Katy Trail. So some of the things we did to kind of ease some of those landowner concerns were no overnight use. We expect the Rock Island will be the same. So Katy's a day use park. We're open 30 minutes before sunrise to 30 minutes after sunset every day. We, and we anticipate that will be the same. We don't provide any overnight lodging or camping facilities on Katy Trail. We think that'll be the same on the Rock Island. Um, that's where we really look to local communities and private uh, business owners to offer camping, um, Airbnb. Uh, David was saying he lives in Hartsburg and there's now five Airbnbs in Hartsburg that weren't there, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, fencing policy, we kind of already talked about that. And then once we get under construction and development, we will have boundary markers just like the Katy. So the top two pictures there are what our boundary markers look like. The orange one, you know, end of public use, and that blue one says state park boundary. We put those back to back, and then we kind of zigzag them down the corridor so you can always see the next one on the opposite side as you travel down the right of way. From a staffing perspective, um, Katy Trail is the longest, skinniest state park in our system, and Rock Island Corridor will be its twin, but on the south side. So we will divide that into sections for management, and each section will be assigned to a Missouri State Park. That will allow them to share some maintenance staff and equipment back and forth between the state park and its remote operation here on the trail. Law enforcement, um, our state park rangers will be patrolling. They've already been out making contacts with the communities um, that are along the right of way. They already work with Cole County, um, some with the, the Katy Trail and North Jefferson area. So, And then volunteers, of course, are a critical piece. Grants and funding, I might let David, if you want to take, yeah. oh, I'm getting ahead of myself, an update on the funding. Yeah, just kind of where we're at on the funding situation. We did receive a, a $2.7 million ADA, ADA grant that we uh, announced when we took the uh, uh, corridor back in December. Uh, we also just recently received a $126,000 uh, grant from the Department of Health from CDC, um, and then um, our foundation raised about a million dollars, and so we have a request uh, this year in the budget, um, and that money went into the State Park, uh, excuse me, the Rock Island Endowment Fund, and that'll be for staff, so I think we've requested two rangers, two maintenance, and a manager, a Rock Island coordinator. Uh, through this budget cycle and when Mel talked about we don't have staff do fencing so once we if that's approved and, and once we get those staff then we'll have staff to go out and do maintenance and fencing and then of course two park rangers to help patrol it um, you know the big item right now that's working its way through the legislative process is the 69.2 million dollar ARPA funding for the Rock Island which is essentially from Eugene to Buford so all through <coughs> Cole County would be included as part of that um, and then we have a we, we run a couple of grant programs. One's the RTP, the Recreation Trail Program grant. And we had, I think, two communities, uh, Bell and Eldon, apply for that this year. Um, and then there's a Land and Water Conservation Fund grant, which can't be used in the Rock Island, but it, it can be used in a community associated with the Rock Island. <clears throat> and then we've got some other grant opportunities we're handing out to the communities. And then our State Parks Foundation is still actively raising funds for the Rock Island uh, to go into that separate Rock Island Endowment Fund that was set up a few years ago. So. This is just a little bit more information about the RTP program, um, and we do have a handout with that if anybody would like a copy. And we provide this at each of the community assessment meetings, yeah, so that they have that resource. Um, it's 80-20 money, so it only requires a 25-year commitment, so that's probably the best fit. But then there are some other resources that we provide to them as well that they can think about and, and consider applying. Community development, we just want to touch on this because um, well, visitation. So Katy Trail, we get, we average more than 400,000 folks every single year. Um, COVID 2020, we had 700,000. Last year, I think it was over 500,000. So um, seeing a lot of folks that come to the trail, it's definitely a bucket list item uh, for people. We, It's not uncommon to run into somebody that's out riding and they're riding the whole thing. It's been on their list to accomplish and check that off their to-do list and they're enjoying it. I think that'll be the same for the Rock Island. 
and we have a, a unique partnership with the National Park Service. They've adopted the Rock Island Trail Corridor, and this might be a great program to really utilize, you know, in the Eugene community and or Henley um, area because they, this Rivers Trails and Conservation Assistance Program, see I included, they can do all kinds of things. They've adopted the corridor and they can meet with individual communities or interested people in these communities and help them with some of their project planning. Do they have a community park? Do they have public land that they'd like to have a community park at? How can they connect their um, public facilities that they have to the other things that they have in town? So where are the businesses? Where's the school? Um, and they can really come up with some deliverables that ultimately could help communities apply for grants. They don't give grants, but they can provide that technical assistance to kind of help them get their paperwork in, in place to move forward with grants. And our contact, oops, our contact is Ashley Newsom. She's based out of Columbia, so she's relatively local and able to, you know, come out and meet with folks <coughs> as needed. So I think um, we I always like to share this quote at the end because this is kind of where we're at. We, we're not sure how all the pieces are going to come together at the end of the day, and so we're looking to complete that planning process and meet with all the communities by June 30th. Um, you know, here in Cole County, because we do have two communities that are unincorporated, we certainly are willing and able um, to go out and meet with them, but I think we'll need some assistance, obviously, from you to kind of figure out what makes the most sense for those communities um, and where those meetings might be, what they might look like. Maybe it's information we mail out. Maybe it's something that we do in public. We certainly are open to kind of your, your thoughts and questions. Um, and I think that's really all the formal presentation. What kind of questions do you have for us? So we've got, I think, roughly, what, six to eight miles of, of Rock Island actually in Cole County, right? So the connector, how much of that will be in Cole County, connecting the KD to the Rock Island? Well, it, it won't connect in Cole County based on the, this map. Let's go back and look at it. So the connector between two parts. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't, you know, work to develop okay. a connector. So the connector for the connected the Katy Trail to Rock Island Stop won't go through Cole County at all. Mm -mm. Yeah. Nope, you'll have two yeah. separate trails. Well, and the, the Katy, you know, North Jeff, so it's right yeah. there on the county line. But um, so that isn't, in, you know, necessarily in Cole County. They won't connect to each other here unless that's oh, something okay. that you okay, want good. to no. work yeah. to develop. And that's certainly something you could consider. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know if it connected no. through Cole County or where it was going to connect. Not at this point. There are communities like in Washington and uh, with the bike lane on the bridge now, they're looking to connect over to the okay. KD. And, okay. You know, as we get further to the east, you know, there's a, we have a railway trail approval to go into Union, then you're only about six miles, you know, from Washington there. So I think there are groups that, that's not part of our planning process right now. Our planning process, which Ryan's kind of leading between now and the end of June, is to kind of come up with a master plan for that 144 mile corridor, identify where those trailheads make sense, and then kind of we'll know then what the funding looks like moving forward and then we can start talking about development so basically it's just eugene and and uh henley that are the our two well, the osage river bridge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right yeah yeah are the two communities okay. that are in cole county i think Take care of the snakes in the tunnel. <laughs> the I have tunnel. not encountered any snakes. It's too cold in there for snakes. Yeah, yeah, too cold. I mean, that's what I heard. <laughs> okay. Uh, Just the bats. Like other, yeah, other folks have experienced that tunnel too. It, yeah. It's pretty accessible, and Bell said it's in good shape. Two of the tunnels are uh, there are four tunnels on the corridor. The Jackson County tunnel is done, which is it was done about three years ago. So we have some good cost numbers from them. And they put like a 12 foot concrete trail through it with the drainage and the lighting system. And so two of the tunnels are concrete line. The one that's out there between Argyle and Amita is not. It looks it, like a cave. I have pictures of yeah. it. Yeah. It looks it like look, they're caving. A little, more, a little more challenging, but. Uh, it's got a curb in it, though, right? It, it's got a bend. You can't see all the way through. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> you and don't it, know what's coming. There yeah. could be a snake down there. Right. <laughs> or a train. Or a train. They did tell us when we went and looked at that one that there was. This would be a... really cool if you would let us take ATVs on them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do, uh, one thing we've done on the KDM we've done on Rock Island, we do offer uh, tram tours for seniors and people who can't get out there. Um, and we've done that. And we've been at Roachport for like 10 years in the fall. We take about 1,000 people over two days. 
and we expand that um, opportunity. Uh, Tuesdays on trail, we call it. We actually got another tram or the Parks Association purchased it. So for folks that can't bicycle or can't walk, we have uh, programming opportunities to get them out and see different sections. And we do that with different sections along the corridor. Those will kick back up in May. Argyle's already got a couple eating, drinking establishments. Yeah. So I would think Argyle would be probably excited. Well, they had those before bike trail. Well, I know. Yeah. Yeah. And they do just fine. Oh, I know. They, I yeah. mean, some herd. Yeah. <laughs> 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 some people just go to eat. Does, so. does DNR have a dream as to when uh, the first cyclist is going to be able to do a loop? Um, a lot of it will depend on funding. I mean, we'll know more in June kind of where we're at. Um, basically, you know, the, the Katy Trail is the longest developed rail trail in the nation. And we have, that's uh, 240 miles plus the Rock Island Sp Spurs 47. So 287 miles is already open. And that's, as Melanie said, you know, essentially St. Louis, Kansas City. Um, you know, this southern route, you know, provides that opportunity in, between Jeff City and Eugene and, of course, on that other end to have a future loop. But there's a couple gaps there. Uh, as Melanie mentioned, uh, the Jackson County, there's, there's a gap between Pleasant Hill and the Jackson County of about six miles that Jackson County's kind of working on. And on the east end, between Mockins and Confluence, it's about six miles. And then when you get to the Confluence, you can actually ride down to the arch. And so there's that potential, I, probably after my time, that ride from Arrowhead Stadium to the arch, you know, uh, and then of course this potential of, of those connector loops. But, as Melanie said, the Katy Trail itself is already a destination, and I think um, we'll see with the addition. There's nothing like this in the world, you know, this system of rail trail um, that, that bring people in from all over. You know, I was I've been around before the Katy, um, um, and kind of saw I'm around Hartsburg and kind of saw you know what the benefits the trail brought to places like Hartsburg and Roachport and those communities. Uh, it's it's been pretty amazing, and I think we'll see the same thing with the Rock Island. Very similar to this. We were in Gerald last night till about 8.30. It went really long, had about 40 people. And talking to businesses, talking to chambers, talking to, you know, sometimes they're at a, a council meeting and sometimes they're a special meeting. But it's just to be able to answer questions. A lot of the communities want to start right now. You know, the communities just are just gathering information. And, and so, but, you know, if we can uh, set one up in either a combo at Henley and Eugene would love to do that if there's interest in doing that it just probably you know. the school and Eugene would be yeah would be the best place to hold a meeting so any contacts you might have for who would we reach out to to, yeah. to set those up we would invite people to, yeah. to get there so the property that you do not have acquired what happens if they don't want to give it up y'all gonna condemn it take it from them or is this gonna be no, no, no. try to work something out with them and you got at least 16 Yes, we yeah, have corridor through the whole thing. It's just where those trailheads are going to go may be determined by where we have enough room to have parking and bathrooms. So, like Eugene, this is, you know, we have plenty of space. Clearly, it's on the, you know, on the bottom of this map. So, to, we have to figure out how to get to that. But I believe that that's a public road that comes down there on the left-hand side. So, as long as we have public access to the right-of-way that was transferred, then we should be able to develop that into a trailhead. Yeah, we're not really interested in acquiring any additional land and so what that planning so process the red is just help. showing what the hundred foot would be that you have for katie trail comparing it um, the blue up here on the top would be i think 100 what i was saying what it shows is what the railroad historically because when we go to this one so that blue on this side that's railroad. standard 100 fit feet and then i'm not sure what yeah, happened there wider, yeah. by henley but it's sold off on either side and in some cases, like Eldon, the city owns it, and they're they're interested. And they're actually working to put a trailhead in because we don't own much land there. So, so the, it railroad is what the railroad did own, but was not transferred over for whatever reason. Exactly. Or, okay. It was sold before it came to us, but we never gave it to us. Okay. That clears it up. Thank you. But yeah, we're not wanting to acquire any additional, if possible, and so it's not something we really did on the KD. You know, we don't anticipate doing it. I sat through a few hearings several years ago when the Rock Island was passing through the legislature, you might say, and 
uh, my my uh, recollection is the title searches on the on the Rock Island were uh, exponentially tougher than they were on the Katy Trail uh, because of all the deals that were made or supposedly made or not made or so on and so forth. But I think our real estate guys agree with you. You are correct. Yeah. Based on these maps, I would say yes. <laughs> yes. But, but you do have enough uh, width to for a bicycle to ride. Oh, yeah. We have enough uh, yeah. to build so. the trail. The question is more about trailheads and where yeah, we have property sure. and stuff like that. So. Well, some places ought to be fighting over having the trailhead, shouldn't they? They I mean, are. <laughs> we, yeah, that was a big discussion last night because we had, what, Rosebud, Buford, Leslie, and Gerald all there all last there. night. And they're all... Pretty close together. Less than 10 miles. Traditionally, about 10 miles is the right distance to have a trailhead. That, you know, that's a, a good distance for a cyclist. They can make it that far, refill their water bottle, take a break, go to the bathroom, whatever. Typical cyclist cycles about 12 miles an hour, I, or I should say, I cycle about 12 miles an hour, and I am uh, on the lower end of an average cyclist. So, you know, trailhead to trailhead in about an hour. Um, so that'd be, you know, 10, 12 miles. So if, you're tri if your communities are only three to four miles apart, then. Our, our closest trailhead on the KD is about four miles. So I think that's dudes out of Marthasville. Mm -hmm. Our longest is Hartsburg to McBain, about 16 miles. So, but they average about, I think, Hartsburg to Jeff City is about almost 11. Where's the steepest grade? I think coming out of the Gasconade River Bridge going east is one of the steeper grades. I used to, I heard, heard stories as we've been out where they basically would take half the train, take it up, and go back and get the other half through Summer, Summerfield, I think is. Yeah, in that area. So we've got one on the Katy that's interesting out of Boonville. It's called Lard Hill because I guess the railroad had a, hit a local lady. legend. Says. Local legends had a, had a lady's <laughs> cow, and they wouldn't the railroad would pay for it. So she went up at Lard on the tracks until, <laughs> so the until they paid her for her cow. So that's she kind of a famous, yeah. infamous story on the Katy. There, there are some grades, but <clears throat> most of it's pretty level and pretty flat and easy to do. You know, the good news with the Rock Island, we've had the KD for 30 years and operated it. We're trying to be good landowners and working with communities. We've seen a lot of community development associated with the trail, and it's been a nice addition to our state park system. So we expect the Rock Island to be the same. Set up with a, as long as we had contact in the who to kind of start with, okay. we'll be happy to set it up. So I can get you some contact info. Okay. Okay. That'd be great. Who do you got to contact? The mayor of Brumley or uh, yeah. <laughs> super, contact the super superintendent of the school. Yeah. yeah maybe they Logger. have a way to help spread the message. And they have a new. They well, have they a new. He's, have the he's a pretty but, dynamic young man. So. I like to have a city council now that you're going to be working with. Well, well, thank you. So. I, I would attend the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just any contact and we can start there. We're trying to get those done between now and, and June so Ryan and Cody's playing together. Thank you all for well, having thanks us. Thanks for having yeah. us. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Thanks. No, they have a new super. Not Rumley, Henley, I meant. Yep. Yeah. And then I'll reach out to them and see what dates might yeah. know. I know that in the, the spring schools are busy, busy okay. with stuff, so we'll see what's available and then. Well, when are you ready to road trip down there? Yeah. That'll be Jeff, you want to ride along? Well, it gets a little, it gets a little, bit, a little bit warmer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, would they want? Okay. Do you, do you want to keep one? This, is, this has got all of the communities on the Rock Island corridor, so if there were questions about what the ride looks like, no, I'd, I'd like to do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> you might get left in Henley, Sam. <laughs> the melodies, the melodies there. I'll just go over melodies. Okay. Do we do we have any other issues that come before us today? No. Jeff. No. 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 Until 3 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay.
It is uh, Tuesday, April 12th. We'll go back into open session. Uh, we have our ARP advisory committee here, and we presented you all with a book. I assume you've all studied that. Yeah. For people to apply. What you have on the inside is a list of the people that apply. Um, and on the spreadsheet is a condensed version of the information that is received on the on each entity. Um, I have had requests from other um, people, uh, other entities, to still put in. Uh, I think there's a confusion between it being a needs form versus an application for. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah. So I told her she could come today if she wanted to talk, you know, about hers. But however you guys see that you want to run it, uh, Roger, I'll let you take a look at you. I don't know if we really are prepared to even discuss it because we've got Adam here from Centertown. But considering the fact you haven't seen any of this yet or been, been able to go over it, uh, I would almost say we might do better just to have a very short meeting today and uh, have study you, pardon? Study what we got. Study what we've got. And again, these are not applications as such. So yeah, you're. Uh, and I should say there's 27 of them and the total request comes to over 36,500,000. That's close. <laughs> Okay, but uh, that's a lot. And we think this is all the no, requests. No, no, and because like uh, juvenile detention center. Um, well, you were saying that uh, Salvation, Salvation Army, Army intended to apply, and it's not in here. Uh, we heard, let's see. We heard by, just by a early, early letter. Right? <laughs> Wasn't is that how we got it? Did you get something? I, I met with um, David Perdue. Oh gosh, Don Kristen Perdue. and I how met about with Don. Or Don Perdue. Kristen and I met with them late last year already on uh, uh, a request for funds. And again, I suggested that that you know they could apply to us and also to the city. Um, so, I mean, my first glance at looking at the list, it looks like there's going to need to be coordination between you guys and the city because there's a lot of city requests on here as well, and they have money also. So, yeah, and then they also have the viaduct, which is is going to be coming out of a different pot altogether. So, I'm not really sure why that's in here at all, but but that. Pot doesn't have enough money to build the viaduct. The capital improvements program. Oh, really? Because uh, this wasn't an application. This just well, needs I know. assessment form, so everybody could have been sending it in for, you know, maybe they need a new cage for their parrot. I don't know. So this, and we still, this doesn't mean you can't apply for it after uh, we've had this. So I don't know. This is just supposed to tell us how many pots of money we're going to have and how much to try to put towards them. Well, some of our internal um, requests, I think we probably need to act on fairly soon, like EMS and, and uh, the sheriffs on um, 2.5 million. We, we had a 911 meeting Friday and so I don't know. On our internal um, request, 
if we can act sooner. Uh, Is Cole County Fire Protection District, are you counting that as internal? They're really not. No, that wouldn't be internal. Yeah. Yeah, no. They're on here too. But that, no, that, that's not internal. No. They're a separate political subdivision, right? Yeah. There, there, I think that there was a request by the by us is the internal request for those funds. So yes. I think that's where that we were. Uh, there was, oh, yeah, that's what I, yeah. There's a separate request for uh, another item on here as well, which does not, is not included in our request. Oh, so. oh sorry. Okay. These by names are the organizations that apply. Does it mean that? what the project is yeah so we will if we've got 30 million now we will have considerably more uh, before we're done Teresa? Are you still there? Teresa? will there be a drop dead date as to when you have to have a request in if, if last Friday wasn't it, would there be one? Depends on how we want to give it out. If we want to go through it and bust through it all right now. And well, we're getting half the money this year and half the money next year. No, so. we got half the money last year. Or last year, I mean, and we'll get the other half. Yeah, so, yeah, I guess we would do it all this year. I mean, we could do it a thousand different ways, so that's, I guess, what we got to hammer out. Do you want to have a a big grant round, a small grant round, and then if there's money left, then we can do another big grant round and another small grant round, or, and that's just throwing something out there. I'm not saying that's how we need to do it, because we already saw with the forms filled out that we can bust all through all of it tomorrow. So It's a little like the family uh, getting their bills in at the end of the month and, and saying, I'll pay that one, but I'm not paying that one, at least not now, and that one I'll never pay. It's almost, you know, that's an idea too. I'm just, just, I'm just thinking out loud. But if, if you, if you were the czar of the operation, would you just take some of these and put them over here and say, sorry, Charlie, we're not going there, um, because you know we have a ultimate when we get when we get the rest of the internals in it's going to be in excess of 40 million I think well that might be stretching it a little bit but, uh, and actually the the one about the to pick on one the one of the viaduct wasn't submitted by the city it was submitted by the chamber uh, so and that that is being circulated Roger you know that uh, the city's capital improvements tax the county's capital improvement tax the five-year it's thought about, uh, but it's one of the projects being discussed. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Uh, so uh, it's hard to rank them. I know that, uh, but it's at some point there has to be some set asides that that are not going to be accommodated, at least in the size asked for. Teresa, can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you. you got any words of wisdom of how to go from here from our needs assessment to what's the next step? Yeah, so when we kind of set up the needs assessment and kind of changed the wording to a needs assessment from application, it was more to gather you know, if there was something specific in the community out there that seemed like it was maybe rising to the top maybe there was an infrastructure thing or, or something like that that was kind of looking like hey this could be a good you know reason to get with the city and, and do this project or something like that um, so if, if you're not seeing anything like that then um, yeah I, I don't know what the next step would be there but if there's something on there that seems like hey this might be a good project or this might be a good area to ask for more applications and so um, that was kind of the idea behind it was just more hey this looks like what the community would want us to spend it on now getting you know the 20 how many applications we got it's not a ton of applications so 
not not as uh, complete of a needs assessment as you probably would want, but gives you a little idea of what's out there and maybe what you can kind of lean towards as far as spending the money on if you wanted to go outside the county. As far as the category, the category for um, types of um, expenditures, anything from public safety to tourism to um, anything you can imagine is on out of these 27. What pot of money, how much you want to put in each type of pot, and then we can go from there. You get a notebook and a spreadsheet. Well, it looks like we can take the list and at least work our way through this list and try to put them in some type of priority order as to what we would think they are. Well, that's kind of what Everybody's I was. Going to be different, right, Jeff? <laughs> that's kind of what I was thinking, and maybe Not meet me. again <laughs> in a couple of weeks. Say the meet again on the twenty sixth. But but we do probably need kind of a drop dead date, I guess, for people to submit requests. That's a whole other application process. Yeah, I know. So, I know. But we got to know what we're doing before we get into that application process, as far as how much money is available, what, what qualifies them for that type of, you know, like Jeff said, do separate pots, separate times, you know, nonprofit, you know, maybe a capital request. You know, do them all at one time, the application is not. I mean, Teresa, you tell me. The application does vary a little, I would think. Yeah, I, I think you need to get your game plan together as far as what you're wanting to spend the money on. This, this risk assessment, uh, or needs assessment um, is more to kind of, like I said, give you those ideas of what you want to spend the money on, what's out there, and then maybe to formulate a more specific request from the community of what's out there. If you're getting a lot of small businesses that are requesting money, maybe that's the way you should go. Looks like there's a lot of kind of bigger projects here that maybe that's the way you want to go. Um, I mean, there's nothing stopping you from, hey, this project number 13 that's exactly what we were thinking let's talk to them and see if that's something that we could go with so it's kind of open to your interpretation at the end of the day um, but I, I would I would hesitate to just you know open another round of applications without being more specific on what, what you're actually wanting to fund at this point I don't even know if we're all playing the same sport at this point to have a game plan so I don't know if we rank these and gives us an idea by how they're ranked that we can say, okay, sounds like majority wants this much in economic development, this many people want it in infrastructure, um, this many people want nonprofit. I don't even know how you want to break it down. Yeah, I, I don't know. You got municipalities, you've got water districts, you've got uh, other not-for-profits, uh, special learning center, um, and the council for drug-free youth. Uh, so, this, this is not everybody's going to apply. No, it's so not. You That's. Don't know what, uh, how big the pots actually need to be. I guess you got an idea of where a lot of it can go, but we can burn through that real fast. We could take the part that's not internal and put that into different pots of money and yeah, cause work on that. The internal stuff kind of, I mean, that's if we want to make a decision on all that stuff, we can probably do that. Well, I would like to do uh, some of our internal stuff. Well, that's internal, so that's yeah, what I'm saying. I'd like that to do that sooner, away. sooner than later because um, it's going to take roughly a year, even after you order that, to. to uh, yes. I, I think I remember you saying last meeting that 
there, it was possible to fund that using a different pot of money or a different source of money initially? Is that what, what you said, or did I hear that wrong? I don't think I did, although I was talking to David Bach yesterday, and he said there is some 911 money out there that is for equipment. So he is going to, to check on that. And if, if we could find something like that, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of money out there. If we can use some of that, that saves us money that we can, we can use on the other entity. So, uh, and I know we've talked to Luke Holtschneider too about trying to find funds out there for uh, 911 and yeah, I don't know if there's any funds for the juvenile attention center that that we get access, Toby, or not. Yeah. No, we can't. Yeah. So we've, I've, I've had more that I've kind of gone towards the, oh, just give me a second. Sorry, I got a little cough on me here, but um, and I've gone more towards um, kind of flowing it to the not-for-profits for them to do assistance. So I've seen a lot of um, that kind of application process, workforce grants, um, small business assistant grants. I've seen a lot of those application processes, but I've also seen the other side of it where you just completely spend it all internally um, and for the needs of your community um, as much as possible um, as that goes. But it, it really just, I mean, depends on what, what you guys want to spend it on. Um, obviously, the application process is a little more in depth time-consuming for your staff and um, you have to take that into consideration of course but if that's what your citizens are are calling for and one wanting maybe that's a way to go but it, it's all over the map really I mean some people use it all on big projects so it's <laughs> and I've, I've said this before it, it they made it very broad on what you can use it for and it's almost a, a hindrance because there's just so many ways to spend it that you have to uh you just have so many choices that you really have to decide and and just go a route Harry, I know you so said, I, sorry, Teresa. no i was just going to say with with the committee it, i think that's that's what you you've got to do is you've got to make a decision on a route to go and then if that's an application process then we'll start that if you know that's internal if that's maybe partnering with um, a city or something on an infrastructure thing, but I think you need to start thinking about making that decision sooner rather than later. Harry, if the main goal was at one time to have something, this is a one-time money, to have something that will be here 20 years from now, you know, is that something still your goal? Some of it has to have a life uh, that uh, is longer than ours because we're not going to pay for it. Somebody else is going to pay for it. Right. And then the fact if we can partially, some of these are saying we can partially fund it. So, um, uh, as I'm looking through the list, I'm wondering if it would be prudent to prioritize it uh, by the public entities and also by the private entities, uh, the nonprofits and those kind of folks put them in one category and then put the public entities in a separate category because I'm, I'm hearing you guys are might be interested in doing something with some of those fairly quick potentially uh, I'm just throwing that out there as an idea is is there only one uh, far profit business involved in this so far? So, by the category they picked, two, three, 
park investment. It's the only one I'm seeing. That's right. You that, would know these more than I. I don't want to know some of these companies. Well, the second column says non-profit. Yeah. Are you seeing the rest of our? I think that's a good idea is to how to tackle it. And I guess I'd break it down then the governmental, I'd break down county and then the other governmental. Uh, that's good. Good idea, Jim. I think uh, it, we could call it in house or whatever. Uh, the county that would include uh, any of the elected officials, the uh, EMS, the sheriff, et, so on and so forth. So that's Cole County. Other political subdivisions, not for profits, and for profit, although they may not claim to be for profit, uh, one of the entities, at least they're competing with for profits, aren't they? The uh, apartments project, or Chamber of Commerce is on here twice, and I know both of those requests are related to a public entity project. Yes. Uh, well, I, I, I think so I... They're I, requesting I, money from somebody <laughs> else is what they're doing. Well, I, I think it probably goes in the public entity bucket. Yeah, I would think so. Even though it's that's asked for by a not-for-profit. Yeah, that's, that's who the money's going to go to. Yeah. Okay. And it, Potentially a joint project between the city and the county, and neither sub political subdivision is ready to commit. So the chamber is applying for the money. That's that's what is happening. So, this may be a stupid question, but is the committee going to meet and go through the? We go through it individually, first, individually, and then I think it'd be helpful if the committee met and then present what the committee came up with to the commission. Yeah. I think it'd be a good idea. Yeah, I kind of like that. The, you guys can uh, throw names against the wall and see if they stick or not, but if you got two commissioners there, um, the, yeah. the press is there as well. So yeah, post this public meeting. Just, I, two. just yeah. two of us makes it a quorum, yes. Yeah. One does it's not. It's got to be a public meeting. Yeah. Yeah, you could have yeah. you could have nine. You mean that way we could have this Yes. Yeah. 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 Sorry. No, I don't. Yeah, we open. Well, I don't well, think that's a bad idea. That's what the committee was formed for anyway, was to yeah. we're really their advisors and yeah. stuff on that side, so ultimately their benefit is people don't like what's done, they can say, Well, you know, we got different ways we're doing it, so <laughs> And that's yeah. just the ones that filled out the needs assessment form. Yeah. yeah. You don't know what you're going to get when you get the application. That might have been why people didn't fill it out. We don't have to. So. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know whether this is a good suggestion or a good insight. But I don't think there's I've never let right that stop me before. Uh, I think some of the requests seem like projects that lend themselves to the county sale, five-year sales tax or whatever it is, city, and we're not going to be able to fund them all. I don't know whether that should be a consideration that could be included in the, the next sales tax project more readily than some of the others. Of course, that's, that, that's putting it off for a while. But if we don't, if we don't fund it, it'll be put off for a good while. And yeah, it's five years. Yeah. I kind of like that idea, and then we'll get your we'll get your feedback and opinions 
That's really how all our other advisory groups work anyway. Yeah, I, I kind of like that idea. They may have one commissioner sit on it, but yeah. as long as you don't let the sheriff at that meeting, because it's uh. a distraction. <laughs> it was Eric, he knocked the radio down. <laughs> uh, but no, I think that's, I think that's, and you might, uh, you know, have it at a different time so you get some of our members who we can we can walk out right now since you're here and y'all can talk about it well we're still missing what y'all can use this we one. we're still missing get more of the committee here uh, and we got four here today which is not a very good turn no so you could have it maybe a different time two, even what two other no, Condi, Chris, and herb coon couldn't make it yeah. You're just looking at the wrong indicator. And they need to they need to look at those books as well right. before you meet. But we want to keep it going. So how many you think? A week for you all to meet or ten days or well, this is Easter week. I don't think we're Oh no. We're not yeah. gonna eat meet no. anymore this week. No. If you can't get everybody at the meeting, we can have a Zoom call set up here. And you can use this chamber. So, yeah, so I mean, that way it makes it a little more convenient. I mean, I like in person meetings better, but sometimes it just doesn't work as good. And I know Chris Yarnell has a hard time making these too. Uh, I'm, we're going to leave it in Roger's hand. He's the chairman. But we can help put that meeting Alan's together. The vice, so we need to sign out chair. the Well, I'd have none, do you? I can help you. Yeah, we need to shoot out the emails. Thursday or uh, Mondays? Let's start with Monday. The sooner we get started, the better, I'm thinking. Gary? If it's later in the day, I don't care if it's evening either. Monday's a holiday, right? right? You know, or at least maybe we start later, late afternoon. Monday to holiday. Monday? Isn't Monday a holiday? <laughs> why not? No, why not? It's Easter Monday. It's My birthday's Sunday, so Monday should be the holiday. Your birthday's on Easter? Yes. <laughs> yes, first time ever. Is it really? <laughs> Boy, I'll what tell you what. 18th? 18th next Four or five? What do you guys think? Well, Alan, four, I think. After four is better for me on Monday. Shoot for, for after four? Or after four thirty. Four thirty Monday. Is this room available or do you need a room at my facility where the air conditioning works? <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, you might corrupt them. Butter up both sides of that bridge. <laughs> What did you say, Tony? The Pringer Center is available too. I think so. <laughs> Tours, that's <laughs> up. Center Town's available. Just trying to help somebody. As far as you on Zoom, I would have the capability to put them on Zoom. It doesn't matter to me, though. It doesn't matter to me either, but I'm right in the center, so. We, if we meet at your place, we don't have to worry about <laughs> this is going to. Not that you're, no offense, Jeff, but this place is going to close down. <laughs> and I, I'm anticipating that we, we need to discuss this for a while. Yeah. So. Uh, and Debbie, can you email he's, he's these who didn't make it and make sure they pick pick up their... Yeah. You're going to have dinner then, right? Yeah. Sure. 1025 Southwest. Or Sam. So we'll, we'll meet at Gary, Gary's office. Four thirty. Where did you say you send out the 1025 Southwest Boulevard? Just up from Mockins there and um, off on the left hand side. Okay. Spider Technologies and mine's a sit and business strategy. Yeah. I'm sorry. 1025 Southwest, Southwest Boulevard. Sweet A. Yeah. And drinks and appetizers. Uh, Sin Technologies. When they're done. 
A standing meeting too. Oh, no chairs. <laughs> Makes <laughs> meetings go faster. And I guess yeah, Harry's fancy desk. Sort of any particular way, just so we know county separate. Yeah, you and that's like I like the governmental and do the county in house and then the other political subdivision. I'm gonna let do you all not for profits, but yeah, you're I'm open to suggestions right now. I want to see what y'all come up with. And oh, you know, there's so many different ways, so appreciate the input on that. We did settle it on 4 30. Okay. I know about where you are. I can find it. Do we need anything else? Do we need BKD on there? <laughs> I, I look at what it costs, you know, per minute. Don't I? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yep. We will let you know what the next meeting is. All right. Which direction we're heading. Yep, just let me know and I'll help out anywhere I can. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Teresa. Okay. Thanks. We're going to meet. Prioritize when do we want to get back together? So, when are you meeting? Monday, next Monday. Yeah. Next, so the 18th. We could meet the 26th, which would be two weeks from today. Why don't we meet Tuesday after they meet? And they can just have whoever come as a representative and provide whatever input and keep it moving. I mean, why wait two weeks? Because if we get it prioritized how we want to do it, we can start getting an application out. Why don't we shoot for that? The 19th? Yeah, a week from today. And if it's okay. not ready, then we take it off the calendar and go to the next week. Right. It, we we, we should. Time if we don't know, because we wouldn't know until after the 18th. Yeah, that, that, we'll be here on Tuesday. We'll just say no report or nothing. Yeah, yeah. Move to the next week. Or if y'all prefer to do it a different way, I'm open to it. Yeah, if you're meeting the 18th at 4.30, is that going to give you enough time to kind of compile it for the next day? we got to get it done. Ask the chair. Okay. Yeah. Oh, these engineers, they're there. Okay, so we will do. Well, we're only going to work on this list. <laughs> we're not working on anything else they got. Okay, so the 19th at 3 p.m. It's specified. Yeah. yeah. If we don't need it, then we just. If we don't, yeah, if, if it, and if it's not doable, then. Yeah. If we need to do it Friday or something, we can change the days. We'll just give us heads up and let us know when we need to be here. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? So uh, I want to go to sleep. On your way to bed tonight. Let it soak in the way. Okay. Nothing else? I make a motion. We stand in recess until 4.30. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Gary, who did win the employee of the year? On that commercial. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I, you now that you're a TV star. That's right. Yeah. Hey Gary, I need to ask you a question. Real quick. Well, I've heard of the soccer complex. I don't know if you have to do the 